Kia has proven it can build a sports sedan, and this is the 2022 Kia Stinger GT. And they've made some improvements. As you can see, it has new looks, it has new safety features that are standard, and a standard, more powerful engine. And we're gonna take it for a test drive, and you're gonna join us. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. Kia has proved that the Stinger is a very successful vehicle for them. As a matter of fact, they were a finalist for the North American Car of the Year. Well, they've come back with a more powerful engine, more safety features, more standard technology, and a whole new look that I think looks pretty cool. And I love this new gray. It almost looks like a German Nardo gray, but this is the new hot color right now. A lot of changes both inside and out, and this has a red interior, which is pretty cool. We're gonna go through this vehicle in 10 different categories. So when you go into the dealer and you're thinking about buying this versus all the competitors, which are listed down below and reviews to those vehicles, that you kind of have a good feel for what you're buying before you pull the trigger and you purchase this car. Remember, the dealer is gonna try and sell you on this car, that's their job. We're gonna give you information on this car so that you can have car smart. So don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell because we do a lot more than cool car reviews. First looks of new vehicles, we wanna give you information so you make a wise choice. Let's get started with Under the Hood. Under the hood of this GT2 test vehicle is a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine with 368 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. And it does zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, which is pretty good. Now there is a rear wheel drive and an all wheel drive option. Both are backed by an eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters and sadly no, there is no manual transmission. However, there is also a lower performance engine called the GT Line, 2.5 liter turbocharged engine with 300 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. And that's a gain of 45 horsepower. And that zero to 60 time is 5.2 seconds. It all depends on which engine you need. You'll also notice under this GT2 engine that these supports right here, there to support the front suspension so that you get better handling. Zero to 60 time, 4.7 seconds in the sport mode. Not bad, that's without the paddle shifters. Just letting this thing do itself, it really goes. The new standard engine is a much better improvement over what they'd had before. Not that I didn't like the previous Stinger, I actually really loved the previous Stinger and I voted for it as a juror for North American Car of the Year. This vehicle really has a lot of get up and go. The nice thing about the performance of this new engine is the fact that it is good at a lot of different ranges. So whether you're just driving along here at 40, a little bit of lag, kicks right in, but not bad. I, again, I wish it had a manual so I could just like put it into the gear I wanted. Now let's just drop it down to a different mode. This is the comfort mode, and that does change the handling. We'll talk about that in just a second, but it still has pretty good pickup, a little bit more of a lag, but it does respond quite nicely. And that's important on an on-ramp, trying to get away from an accident, maybe just in a passing mode. But on your daily drive, the more spirited sport version, obviously, is going to be a lot more fun. Now let's drop down to that eco mode. And of course, that changes everything. Eco meaning better fuel economy. And we're just gonna have a little fun here at the stop sign. Once it's our turn to go, we're gonna see how it does in zero to six. It's gonna be a lot slower, but not that dramatically. And I think that's what's important. When you want something that's good fuel economy, you don't have to give up everything. And I think that's what Kia was thinking when they built this Stinger. This is our Halo Sports Coupe. And that's an eco mode. Look at that get up and go. That's pretty good. The other modes that this has is a smart mode, which is the good balance. And there's a custom mode as well. You just turn that little dial right behind the shifter, pick the mode that you want, and you can decide what works for you. I really do like the fact that this car does all of the performance acceleration as needed in any mode. So what I mean by that is you're stopped at a light, you wanna get around something, you wanna avoid something in any mode and you're going to get good performance. I think that's something you don't get in every car. Sometimes it's such a dramatic change when you go to eco that it's literally anemic and there is no anemic mode when it comes to this car. I'm pretty impressed. This new motor really is a gigantic improvement. Not that it needed it, but this really steps up its game. So when it comes to performance, this vehicle earns a nine. 
So as far as this vehicle handling, when you change the different drive modes, you get different engagements of how the vehicle handles. But in addition, as well as go power, you have woe power. And those are the Brembo brakes. And that I really like. That's a high performance brand. You don't see Brembo brakes on your daily driver. And that elevates what Stinger is, especially the Stinger GT2, to its competition. Now there's a lot of competition. I listed them all down below as well as some of the links to those reviews so that you can kind of get a good valuation before you go to the dealer and say, I'm ready to take this thing for a spin. And then you can decide by driving all the vehicles that you want, which one meets your needs. We do talk about all the gauges when we get down to technology between the two main gauges in front of you, which is obviously the tachometer and the speedometer. I do like the nice tight steering that is in this vehicle. Uh, it's very specific. Uh, you don't have any sloppiness. It handles pretty flat, actually surprisingly flat. And I'm just in the normal mode. I'm not in the sport mode. And you can still see that this vehicle handles pretty flat. A little bit of body roll, but not bad at all. So you're talking about how it handles and how it brakes. It does a great job at that. Now it is not a race car. It is not meant to be a race car. It is a sports sedan that has a spirited ride. Think of it sort of like an Audi S4, which would be a lot more expensive or a BMW with an M trim package. It's not going to be the total maximized performance. But again, this is something that's important that you take this thing for a drive and see how it handles. And I think you'll be very impressed. And for handling, this vehicle earns an eight. They're listed here in the driver assistance area. For example, blind spot safety, which is standard. I have it set for the warning only, but you can adjust it as you want. And better yet, it tells you what it does. And a lot of these safety features can be very complicated, lots of three letter acronyms. And so that's why you wanna make sure that you get what you want. This driver assistance is uh, for lane departure warning. There's lane safety, you've got forward safety, and it explains whether you want active assist, the warning only, or you want it off, and it explains to you what it does. All of these are standard. Now, one of the best features that's on Kias and Hyundais is the blind spot camera. When you turn on your turn signal, whether it be left or right, the gauge in the middle becomes a camera, and that is fabulous. And that will save you from having an accident with a vehicle that's directly behind you. This is a huge improvement over just using your mirrors. Overall, all the safety is included and it's standard, and this vehicle earns a 10. When it comes to visibility, this is a sedan. So therefore you're gonna have some limitations like you would in other vehicles, but out the front, you've got a good sized piece of glass. And that's important because 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. Now, when you go along to the side, the sill height is a bit high. Does that make much of a difference to the driver? No, but the passengers, especially if they're little kids, they wanna be able to see out. So you don't want those sills to be too high. It makes the exterior look cool, but it does limit the visibility for those inside. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you do get a backup camera that is designed with four cameras and you really get some really excellent clarity. Now, what's really important, and it's funny, somebody commented in uh, our comments down below on a previous video that although the screen may be HD, the cameras need to be top of the line as well. This has got really good clarity and when you turn the steering wheel, you actually can see the lines of both the front and rear wheels and where it goes on the right side and in the center. You have the ability to do that for backing up. It has some guidelines. You can also press the button and just get immediately behind you or you can press the button and just get those sides so you don't hit something or make sure you're within those yellow lines of a parking spot if you're not a good parker. When you're looking at seating, especially in the front seats, first thing is seat belts. Not all these vehicles have adjustable height seat belts, but in this price point, that should be standard. And I've seen it even in $20,000 cars. So we're all built differently and you wanna make sure that seat belt doesn't cut your neck. Now, as far as the seats themselves, these are super comfortable. Now, this is the GT2. It is the top of the line. So you know they're going to give you the best seats that have four-way lumbar. It has adjustability on the bolsters, including the thigh support, which is not on the passenger side. But that's fine. It has lumbar, very comfortable seating on the passenger side. And I do like these larger bolsters, especially if you're going to be a little bit more spirited driving. But there's three-stage heated and three-stage cooling. Let's take a look at the second row and we'll give it a rating. Coming around to the second row, first thing you're gonna note is this beautiful red interior. I think that is just 
fabulous. And yes, it's a slightly higher charge for that, but the upcharges on this vehicle once you're at the GT2 is very minimal. The one thing you're going to notice is a lot of leg room right away. I set the seat for me and there is tons of knee room. There is lots of headroom and shoulder room. And I think that's really important when you have three people potentially sitting back here. The person in the middle is going to be squished. There are two child safety seats. Those latch connections are right here. Now, in addition, in front of you, you have two vents, 12 volt and a regular outlet, which I think is great. So you can charge whatever it is we're all charging. When it comes to the center console here, you put it down, there are two built-in cup holders, which I do appreciate. These are 60-40 split seats, and we'll cover that when it comes to cargo. One other thing to note is there is heated rear seats, and those are three-stage, and they're here in the door, as well as the Harman Kardon audio system. You have your tweeters, your mid-ranges, and your boost right here in the door. The audio system in this car is spectacular, and we'll talk about that in features. Overall, when you're looking at the seating comfort of this vehicle and what it offers for this price point, it earns a nine. When you're looking at the technology for this Stinger, it comes standard with a 10.25 navigation display, and that is good size, a little bit small for the class, but it does have a lot of neat features. The map is pretty crystal clear. Of course, people are using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay because it is much better for them because it has a lot of their information that they need. Your menu, your phone, your phone projection, your voice memos, and your climate, which you can use the actual buttons down below. You've got valet mode so that no one has a Ferris Bueller's day off. Your HD radio data. And then when it comes to audio, you've got this spectacular Harman Kardon system. And I do like this little cutesy kind of Edison bulb type display and you can get AM, FM and satellite radio. All of that does have multiple memory settings. Standard is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto plus a multimedia connection. You've got Bluetooth wireless connectivity and split screen functionality if you wish. Also the available 7 inch center cluster which provides a lot of safety information and additional info. One of the features that it's on the Stinger, which is also standard on all of the Kia and Hyundai products, at least most of them, is the different types of sounds of nature, if that's your thing. And you've got your lively forest, your calming seas, your rainy day, the open air cafe, the warm fireplace, and the snowy village. Also standard is the Kia Uvo system and the owner's manual, which is built right in there, and you can set your alarms and alerts to personalize this vehicle however you like. There's a lot of nice technology in this vehicle, and it's really easy to use, but keep in mind, you're competing against the Germans, and they've got virtual cockpit, and Mercedes has some spectacular m system, and BMW, as well as the other brands. So when it comes to technology, this vehicle earns a 9. When you get inside the Kia, the first thing you're going to note is this very cool flat bottom wheel and the GT logo. They did a nice job with that new Kia logo. And on the left side, you're going to notice the mode. That's for all of your audio systems, including your favorites right there. And there's your paddle shifter for the minus like we talked about in performance. And the plus is on this side. Going to the right side of the steering wheel, this changes the pages between the gauges. And this is for your cruise control and your safety systems are here so you can engage them as needed on the highway. When you press that button that's on the right side of the steering wheel, it'll rotate through some information on fuel economy, navigation, if you're in the middle of that, your safety features, which you can turn on and off. This is additional information. If you just want to know your speed, that's fine too and the gauges, which I think look pretty cool. These are actual gauges on the right and left side, and if you're buying this car used down the road, I think that's really smart to have real gauges, although everyone's got these cool gauges, but if they fail because they are computers, a regular gauge will function, and that is a good point if you're looking at this as a used vehicle down the road. On the left side, you'll see the vents, more safety adjustments here, and those cool aluminum pedals. On the door just below that Herman Kardon tweeter, you've got two seat settings. Going further down, there's another speaker right there for your mid-range right there. And then you've got your window adjustments, window lifts. That's all pretty cool, and I love this red interior. By the way, interiors come black 
red, gray, and beige. Again, it depends on your trim level, so there will be some additional things for you to choose to make it your own. Going to the center, you've got that 10.25 inch screen. I do like these vents. They're adjustable. You can move them and you can turn them on and off how you wish. They're just part of that cool thing. They're a little plasticky, but you know, what do you expect for a car in this price point and this beautiful interior? Going further down, you have your controls. The main controls, you'll be looking at your map, navigation, favorites, emergency, your radio, your media, and your setup modes are all right there. Volume, an actual volume button, and a tuning button. Further down, you've got real climate control. It is a dual zone up front, and it's pretty simple to use. Further down, you've got wireless charging, which I prefer the actual plug-in because it doesn't get so hot, but it is available. And then there's 12 volt outlet right there. Just to have options for that radar detector. Some more storage right here. Then you've got two cup holders and your standard Prindle park button, but this sort of, when you put your foot on the brake, you can move it to reverse and normal. So it's pretty easy to use. Nothing complicated, certainly not like some of the German complicated ones. And this is parking brake, your auto hold, and that's great when you're at a light. You put that on, it's a very popular option. And this is for your drive modes. You just turn the one you want. Further back, you've got your heated seats and your cooled seats. They're pretty simple, easy to use. Heated steering wheel, park assist, camera, auto off. I like that off. And just a little bit more storage there. Under this cover is just some more additional storage. The sunroof is on the small side compared to some of the competition, but it is really nice if you want to have some of that sunlight coming in. And for features, there isn't many options, but this is quite impressive as standard features, and this vehicle earns a nine. The first thing you notice when you look at the new Kia design is these vents on the hood. Well, they're not actually functional vents, but they look great, and they give it a more sporty or more muscular look. And I think that's needed because you want the appearance of this vehicle to look pretty muscular. It does handle and perform that way. So let's step up the exterior look as well. And they've done that. I love this gray color and some new colors on the GT2 line as well. Remember the GT1 also has a lot of cool options as well. So you're looking at this LED headlight, new signature with these dots. You saw that in the thumbnail for this. And then across the front, you've got gloss vents that are functional for the brake ducts. That's really good. But then when you look over here with the new Kia logo, that's one thing that I think really is clean. It's nice. It almost still looks like nine inch nails to me. What do you think? Another thing to note on this grill is that it now matches the rest of the family. That same styling like you're seeing in the Telluride and all the rest of the cars and the SUVs. Below the bumper, you've got an additional grill that has gloss and it is functional. You want to keep this car running cool, especially if you decide to take it to a track event. That could be fun with this vehicle because this is a really nice balanced daily driver as far as everything about this. The new front splitter in front is also part of that new design. Our test vehicle rides on 19 inch alloy wheels with Michelin all season tires. There are other wheel choices available, but these look pretty darn good with those nice red Brembo brakes because stopping power is as important as go power. Going further back, this detail is really nice. It is functional. There actually is a pasture to let air come out from the brakes. And that's nice because a lot of times it's just there. It's not actually functional. And you can see this pasture goes right through. I do like this dark black chromed mirror look. It's definitely a different look for vehicles. We never see this on cars. We see this typically in homes and in kitchens, but this is really nice. Black matte trim. And of course you've got your glass roof, which I wish was a little bigger, but it still does the trick. Love this gray as it works its way all the way to the back. And there's even some paint protection here for those areas that get chipped up. And you typically don't see that on street cars. You typically see that on performance cars. So Kia was thinking about who's using it and we want to keep this car looking good. As you move your way back, you'll see that this window tapers back, still giving you some pretty good visibility for the second row. Coming around to the back, there is a lip spoiler here that is sort of a integrated wing. I kind of wish it was a bigger wing because it is a GT2, but it's nice and classy and clean and it just says Stinger. It does not say Kia anywhere on the back, only on the front. 
Very smart. I notice Ford's doing that too with their Bronco. You don't see Ford anywhere, you just see Bronco. This is to show that this could be its own brand line. And I find that interesting as well. You have GT and all wheel drive and LED tail lights, which are new that connect all the way across. And this is part of that light signature. Going further down, two big exhaust pipes on each side. I really like the fact they broke that up with some black. Really looks good. I like this new design. And for design, it earns a 10. When you're looking at the quality of this Kia Stinger, I was pretty impressed with its build and its quality of sub-brands. For example, Brembo, using premium audio systems. And when you think about it, you want to buy a vehicle that's in that $50,000 range, if you're in that price range, you want to look for something that's going to hold up over time. Well, Kia has done that with its 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. They own the steel factory that makes the metals for this so they can control what they have and control their inventory. But on top of that, the build quality, the gaps in the panels, just all the stitching is real. And I think this is great, but when you start looking at all this, it is a Genesis as well. I know that that's Hyundai's premium luxury line, but this goes head to head with it. So if you're thinking about buying a G70 and you look at the comparatives, you're gonna see these are very similar, just have a different logo on the front. That's because a lot of parts are shared between Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis. I really do like this vehicle. I think they did a great job with build quality and it earns a 10. Coming around to the back, you have 23 cubic feet of storage. This is a hatchback design, and that's actually quite a lot. If you're looking at a compact crossover, you're getting the same amount of storage. Fold down that 60-40 split rear seat, and you're now up to 41 cubic feet of storage. That's a lot of storage, and probably more than most in the class. When you're looking at the value of this vehicle compared to its competitors, there's a lot, all the German cars, then you've got some domestics, even the Mustang competes in this category. So if you're looking at the GT line with the smaller engine, it starts about $36,000, but then you want the all wheel drive, which is not available in all of its competitors. And you add the V6, which I really like, then you're looking at a higher price point. But if you want the all wheel drive and the V6, you're now gonna step this up to a higher price point. You're looking at around $43,000 for the GT1. This is the GT2. I really love everything they've done with this vehicle. And when you're talking about a value of $51,000, you're just slightly below that of a Genesis G70. And that is also a performance trim level, and we have reviewed that as well. You can check that out on our channel. Now, when you're thinking about this versus that, that's a luxury car. Genesis G70 is luxury. This is a Kia Stinger. Again, I keep saying there's a lot of similarities, and there are. But when you're looking at that all-wheel drive, which gives you year-round drivability, especially if you've got all-season tires, and this price point, I know it's a lot at $51,000, but the average price of a car today is about $42,000. So this is not that much above the average price being paid. Again, you have to look at your residuals before you make a lease. If you're gonna buy it and you're gonna keep it and you're gonna modify it and make it yours and have a great time with it, that's an option as well. Again, check your insurance rates so you can see what works for you. But overall, when you're looking at the value of this vehicle compared to other vehicles in the category, if they were to load up those same options across the board, this Kia Stinger earns a nine. Now there's a lot of pros and cons to this vehicle. The pros, for sure, great performance, good handling, better looking, lots of standard safety, standard technology, great features and options. A few things are lacking, but certainly nothing that would make you throw your hands in the air and go, this is not for me, except for one thing I wish it had. And I know that a lot of you don't know how to drive with three pedals. It's something everyone should learn to do, and that is a manual transmission. If this vehicle had a manual, it would be awesome. I think that would really help you place the power where you want it. Yes, you can use the pedal shifts, but it's not that same experience as three pedals. Now you can put that in the comments below what you think. When you're taking a total score of this vehicle in all 10 categories, the 2022 Kia Stinger GT2 earns a 91. Now I did not cover every single little minute detail and I'm sure you have additional questions as everyone always does. Put those in the comments below. I am more than happy to answer them. If you got value from this video, make sure to like and share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm on all forms of social media, at Lauren Fix. We cover literally every vehicle that's in the marketplace today, and we wanna make sure that we get your questions answered before you make that final decision. Don't forget to check out our website, Car Coach Reports in English and Spanish. Other reviewers on our channel have also reviewed this vehicle, and you can get additional opinions, and then of course, if you check out our podcast, Total Car Score, it's on all platforms. We would appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time.